marathons. Perhaps both the most challenging and rewarding distance to run, but they can be a cruel mistress if you get it wrong in training or on the day. What you need to know is how long should you be taking to train for one? And how do you structure it? And what do you train? It's not a one size fits all answer, but my aim in this video is to give you an idea of how long you need, how to use the time wisely, and how to plan your own training structure. So here's the deal. If it helps in any way, consider subscribing. And let's start with a curveball. How do you frame all of this before you even start? So here's the curveball as best I can explain it, and that is before you start thinking about how long it's gonna take you to train for a marathon or what types of sessions you need to do, you need to start thinking about why you're training for a marathon. Hi, Mary. Hi. <laughs> and when I say why, you see I've got a theory on why we run. This channel, by the way, is all about trying to help you become a lifelong runner, not just running for something, but running for the entirety of your life. And that's where the why comes in. So some people train for a marathon as their outcome, it's what they're going towards. And some people train for a marathon because it's part of a bigger process. And the problem with training for a marathon when it's just an outcome is that outcomes end. There's nothing beyond it. Then what do you do next? Some people can be a bit lost and especially if it's the first thing that they do, then that might be the only experience or only time that they have a relationship with running. But when running a marathon is just part of a bigger process, you have a why sitting on top of it. Let's say mine, for example, is that I just want to be as fit as I can possibly be and do the best I can possibly do in my running and triathlon. That's my why that sits above that. I want to be a runner for life. So then, the marathon becomes just part of the process. Yes, I'm training towards a marathon, but after it, it doesn't matter what's next. But, but actually, my process is I want to be a better person all of the time. So I guess what I'm saying is have a marathon as a goal, that's fine. But have it as a process goal, not an outcome goal, as in it ends. Just have it as something that you do, you move on to the next thing. And psychologically, that makes you much more likely to be a lifelong runner from the get-go. Now we need to work out how you structure the training. Okay, now you've psychologically framed your training in the right way, what I'm gonna try and do is teach you how to structure your training working backwards from your goal race. So what I've done is I've picked London Marathon 2023 as an example because it's a nice distance away, 30 weeks, and I'm gonna show you how I would work it. Now a quick explanation, I work in training blocks of four weeks which usually consists of three working weeks and then a recovery week at the end and then repeat. Apart from the very last training block which is three weeks and then a three week taper. So you could almost consider that one six weeker. So let's work back from London, let's make sure I'm in frame. Let's work back from London 2023. So the start date for that, the race date is the 23rd of April. So what I'm gonna do is I'm straight away gonna put a three week taper in from that date. So I know I'm gonna be tapering and getting ready for the race for three weeks from the 23rd. Then I'm gonna put the build block, the second build block, which is where I do the biggest distances and volume. That's gonna be the three weeks before the taper. And then we're gonna fall into a nice pattern of four week training blocks. So the first build block, build block one, is gonna slot in just before build block two. And I call them build because that's when I kind of put the bigger distances in and we'll talk more about that later. Then I've got base block three, then base block two, and base block one. And because I've gone so far back but we're not quite at today's date yet, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep repeating the base block one. We might do different things in those base blocks, but we're just gonna see where we lie when we fit in different base blocks. And oh, as luck would have it, we actually would be starting training absolutely today if we wanted to fit into a perfect block pattern. Now that's how I would work backwards from a race date. And you can do that with any race date that you've got and see how many weeks you've got and then see how you can fit in your blocks. But you don't just wanna know about how to fit the blocks in. You wanna know what to put in the blocks. So whilst this is structure it, let's talk about how we train it. The structure is there and now it's time to train, but you need to know how or what to train. Let's keep it simple. The marathon is a long distance endurance event. And for the majority of us, it's gonna be about finishing rather than running hard. So for most of us, we need to train like that. 
I prefer an undulating plan, which is to say running every other day. Within that week, I'll have my weekend long run done at an easy aerobic base intensity. And in the week, I'll have more aerobic runs and also threshold style tempo runs. I have dabbled with high intensity intervals before when training for marathons like 400 meter repeats or kilometer repeats, but my body doesn't respond well to them. It does work for some people. The threshold runs, depending on your level of training, could be at marathon pace or even half marathon pace, but that's if you're aiming for times. If not, then just a 7 or 8 out of 10 in intensity should still do a nice job. Each block has a purpose, so my build blocks tend to be about adding volume and distance of aerobic runs as I get nearer to the actual marathon date. Some of the base blocks may focus more on lactate threshold runs or even intervals for more speed. I don't focus on all aspects in every block. If you're new to marathon training, you really can't go too far wrong with mostly aerobic base runs with a tempo each week. Oh, and some strength and conditioning on the non-running days. So we've framed it, structured it, trained it, and it's time to contain it. This is a really important one in terms of the amount of time you're gonna be taking to train for a marathon. Containing it is about not getting carried away, and I mean that in terms of a single session, or within a week, or over the period of the whole marathon process. Let me explain. There are some times, for example, if we're taking the single session where maybe I have prescribed a 23 kilometer run and the athlete that I'm coaching will go out and run 25 or 26 kilometers. No big deal, you might think. Possibly in isolation, no big deal. But if that is a consistent pattern that you're running a little bit further than prescribed each time and then pushing it each time, the body is quite good at compensating for being tired, holding on to technique patterns and keeping going. But there might come a time when you're tired deeper into the marathon training block where the body says no more, can't do it and that is when overuse injuries happen, when one muscle finally gives out and it's usually because you push too hard too soon. And that's the same with general training volume. If you just go straight through to running 100 kilometers in a week or something like that, that becomes very difficult for your body to deal with, keep up with and compensate for if you've got poor technique. So when I say contain it, what I mean is stay humble and make sure that you build gradually, sensibly and safely. That's the best way to get to a marathon. It's not worrying if you miss one particular session. Don't try and cram it in somewhere else. That's part of the process. Just don't miss two in a row. Basically, overtraining is the quick way to find yourself not on the start line come race day. So now we're at the point where we need to know how long it's gonna take us to train for this marathon. Or as I like to say, how long do we have to maintain the training? Because it rhymes with all the and anyway, you get the picture. And for me, there are two ideal situations. The ideal situation is if you're a runner who kind of runs a few times a week, maybe your longest run is around 10 to 12 kilometers and your, norm, your kind of normal midweek runs are in the region of five to 10, I would recommend about 18 weeks for training. Let me break that down just quickly. That would be two base blocks of four weeks each. So that's eight weeks and then one build block of four weeks, so that's 12 weeks. And then the next build block, which will be three weeks, as we said, the last build block is three weeks. So that's 15 and a three week taper, 18. That's ideal right there. But even more ideal is however long you've got. If you know a year in advance, if you're watching this just after the London Marathon 2022, and you know you want to run it in 2023, then start now. But uh, you know, with a caveat. See, I would have lots of little process goals, like maybe through October, November, I'd start with some five and 10 Ks, some races or some runs in training. And then over the winter coming into early 2023, maybe a half marathon or two. And then you really push on in the build block to get yourself to London in such great shape because you've taken your time, you've done it gradually, and more importantly, you've done it safely. So although there's no perfect amount of time, there can be a perfect amount of time for you and that is how long you got but 18 weeks is a good kind of middle ground if you're thinking about training for a marathon 18 weeks out that's going to get you to where you need to go but longer better if the video helped you consider subscribing but no hard sell and you might also like this video which is how to get the best out of yourself come marathon day and below is a completely free interactive training plan for a marathon that can take you from now into next year if you start just want to help hope it helps see you next sunday